on this computer. Boom. Recording. Take two. Um, alors, bonsoir tout le monde. <rire> Bienvenue à cette deuxième présentation des grandes œuvres du Cœur Saint-Laurent. Cette présentation est pour seulement euh, les choristes, les gens à l'interne. Donc, il euh, n'y a pas de souci euh, à propos que des gens de l'extérieur soient en train de voir la présentation. So, it's just for us. And uh, tonight, um, I'm going to present a very important work in the canon of oratorio and big works. Now, we were just having this discussion before I started about, did the St. Lawrence sing it in the past? If it's a big work, how come it's not done more often? Eh bien, comme plusieurs des compositeurs de l'Angleterre, il semble que c'est difficile parfois pour eux de graduer à l'extérieur de l'Angleterre. Cette œuvre-là, encore aujourd'hui, est intrinsèquement liée avec le pays où elle a été créée, l'Angleterre. So it's not that it's not done outside, but still, it's a very English work still today. Now, je suis très content qu'on puisse euh, la regarder ensemble ce soir euh, parce que c'est vraiment de la belle musique. It's wonderful music. Puis on va regarder ensemble euh, le détail peut-être dans la deuxième partie, un petit peu plus de la présentation. Pour commencer, je voudrais juste donner un peu le contexte. Alors, de quoi je parle ici? Je parle de Monsieur Elgar. If you think of Elgar, you're probably thinking of what? Any piece that you are thinking of when I say Edward, you can open your mic, I don't mind. What are you thinking of when I say Edward Elgar? Open circumstance. There you go, the big marches. Everyone knows it, it's, it's everywhere. It's done at the prom, it's done everywhere. Um, anything else from Edgar that you would know? Because- Salut d'amour, salut d'amour. Salut d'amour, okay, so he has some part songs. What else does he have? Enigma variations. Ah, that is the work I was looking for, the Enigma Variation. That's what put him on the map, actually, right before the Dream of Drones, yes, we're going to talk about tonight. But anything else? Cello piece. Would you happen to know his symphonies? Oh, I was going to say his song cycle, Sea Pictures. Ah, Sea Pictures, very good. Or would you happen to know his... Cello concerto. His okay, cello concerto. Very good. Excellent. There's an or there's an organ sonata. Oh, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good well, piece. you guys know quite a few works, then that's great because he did compose more than just the poem circumstance circumstance ou just the enigma variations. Il a écrit par exemple plusieurs plusieurs oratorios avant qu'ils soient connus et on va voir ça ensemble dans un petit instant. Alors, je vais commencer tout de suite ma présentation avec le PowerPoint. Let me share my uh, my um, PowerPoint, let me go to the beginning. Okay, all right. So, The Dream of Dionysius, Opus 38 by Monsieur Edward Elgar. Le compositeur. So, je mentionnais quelques, quelques de ses œuvres, mais this is often a picture we see because he loved to take walks in the country. He loves even to bike. Maybe you've seen pictures of him on this huge bike. You know the bikes they used to have with the big wheel in the front? So he would, he would take a lot of walks uh, with his wife. He was very, very close to his wife. Et c'est un compositeur quand même qui a une belle vie, assez remplie. Um, so quelques petits pointers pour vous um, dans, son, dans sa biographie. Donc il est né en 1857 à Broadheath, qui est près de Worcester, en Angleterre, bien sûr. Um, je vois qu'il y a des questions qui rentrent. Je vais laisser quelqu'un d'autre y répondre des co-hosts. I'm just going to focus on the presentation. Il est issu d'une famille catholique. And that is a very key thing about him. Because uh, you must remember that it was a pro England was mainly a Protestant country. And, uh, and, but he, was, he felt very strongly as a Catholic. And because of that, uh, he's going to feel like an outcast a little bit all of his life. Donc, il vient d'une famille qui est musicale. Il apprend le violon dès l'âge de 7 ans. Il va commencer donc comme violoniste. Il va essayer de faire carrière with different gigs and then he's going to try to make a living. But his real passion was composition. Alors, il voulait devenir, bien sûr, compositeur. Il se marie donc à Alice. Alice qui revient partout dans sa biographie. Comme je disais, il était très proche de son épouse. Donc, Alice Roberts en 1889. Et donc, il va s'essayer euh, comme compositeur à Londres, ce qui ne va pas fonctionner. Il va revenir ensuite dans la ville de Malvern. Et ensuite, ce qui va se passer dans les années 1890, now we're 10 years before the dream of Gerontius, he's going to write uh, three uh, major oratorio. Well, they're not as big as the one we're studying tonight, but maybe you know these, The Black Knight, King Olaf, and Caractatus, 
especially the last one, is going to make a bigger impression. Slowly, il va acquérir une certaine notoriété donc comme compositeur. Et um, le, le, le breakthrough, si vous voulez, va se produire, vous l'avez mentionné juste dans, euh, il y a un petit instant, en 1899, avec bien sûr ces variations Enigma euh, qui vont être dirigées par Hans Richter, qui est un, un, un chef d'orchestre très populaire euh, en Angleterre, qui va faire les premières de beaucoup d'œuvres, pas seulement pour Elgar. Euh, donc, suite à cette euh, grande euh, réussite euh, en 1899, le Birmingham Triennial Music Festival, I'll come back to that a in a little bit, va lui commander The Dream of Drowncius en 1900. Donc, voyez-vous, on est au début d'un nouveau millénaire. Euh, euh, Qu'est-ce que j'ai un nouveau millénaire? De nouveau siècle. Et ensuite, il compose sans relâche dans le prochain 20 ans qui va suivre, il va faire d'autres oratorios très importants. Maybe you know these, The Apostle and the Kingdom. So as you can see, he wrote a lot of choral music. Um, puis comme j'ai dit tantôt aussi, il y a des part songs qu'il a écrit beaucoup d'œuvres, même pour cœur de femmes, pour cœur d'hommes, et ainsi de suite. Uh, suivront deux symphonies, un concerto pour violon, un concerto pour violoncelle, some of you mentioned it, et bien sûr, son fameux Palm and Circumstance. Je continue. So what about his music? How does it sound? So these were the works, but he was very fond of folk music. He's not the only English composer. <laughs> If you think of Vaughan Williams, right? There's a lot of different uh, English composers that were fond of folk music and that included that in their music. But who did he admire? He admired uh, Handel, not so much early music. Um, he admired Dvorak, Brahms, and especially Wagner. L'influence de Wagner, elle est vraiment euh, omniprésente dans la musique. Vous allez le voir ce soir. C'est pour ça que je voulais le mentionner. Because we have a lot of chromaticism, very, very heavy chromaticism. But even more than that, and you can see it coming, when you say Wagner, you see the late motifs, right? The idea of having a little theme on which you can construct a full symphony, a full opera. And in the case of the Dream of Drontius, It's uh, om omnipresent. It's everywhere. We have different light motifs, not just one, but we have two, three, four melodies that represent different scenarios. Si on regarde ces techniques d'orchestration, elles sont plus proches de Berlioz, Massenet, Saint-Saëns, en fait, donc de musiciens plus um, français. Ça, c'est plus dans, les, quand je dis les techniques d'orchestration, c'est la manière d'écrire pour les instruments. Donc, euh, on voit beaucoup l'influence de Berlioz dans sa musique. Uh, even though he was remembered mainly for his uh, orchestral music and marches, he composed quite a lot of choral music, as I mentioned, oratorios, part songs, and anthems. He was a master of the large form. Like I just said, a long oratorio with complex design and with late motifs. He had the, a, a very, very sharp mind that could have so much in it, you know, and to tackle a large form. So he fa favored that in his composition. Toutes ces compositions sont assez longues, elles sont assez compliquées aussi au niveau de la forme. He's known for his striking colors in the orchestration and bold tunes in the melodies. C'est justement son harmonie, elle est typique de la période romantique, ce qui veut dire que oui, elle est, um, um, elle est chromatique, mais pas juste ça, elle va moduler beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup. So the tonal center is shifting constantly. Uh, and sometimes he will be mentioned as the first English composer of international stature. But, you know, I've heard that about a lot of different English composers. I've heard that about Britain as well. I've, I've heard that about Vaughan Williams. I've heard that about before him Purcell in the beginning. So, on a dit ça à propos de plusieurs uh, compositeurs um, d'Angleterre, anglais, qui ont uh, percé à l'extérieur du pays. Maintenant, un petit quote de Elgar qui est vraiment surprising. Check this out. I always said God was against art, and I still believe it. Why would he say such a thing? I just mentioned he was <laughs> heavenly Catholic, right? Why would he say that? We're going to see. Let's move on. La commande de l'œuvre. Alors, quelques petits pointers encore une fois sur, um, sur l'historique. Les directeurs du Birmingham Triennial Music Festival vont l'approcher en 1898 comme je disais, pour qu'elle compose une œuvre d'envergure pour le festival de 1900. Pourquoi je dis le festival de 1900? C'est qu'il n'y avait pas un festival à tous les années. This festival was happening every three years. So it was a big bang. It was a big happening when it was, it was there. Um, puis le Birmingham Triennial Music Festival, maybe some of you know it because you know England quite well, mais c'est un festival très important. C'est ce festival qui va produire, par exemple, Elijah. 
right? Mendelssohn will produce some of his piano concertos there for the first time. He will premiere them there. It was a big music festival with orchest orchestral music and choral music. And it was one of the longest one. Look at that. It was from 1784 to 1912. J'ai pensé vous partager, uh, je vais vous donner le PowerPoint après. Uh, mais j'ai mis le link ici pour, uh, it's, it's not active anymore as a festival, but you can still see a bunch of pictures and the works that were performing that festival back then. Um, as well, you can even see the money that they made over the years because they were making money for a hospital. I think it was the funding, funding hospital, I forget. Enfin, alors, on retourne à l'histoire. Elgar songe d'abord à, à faire un oratorio sur Saint-Augustin. But then people said, no, 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 this is again too Catholic, move away. Then he thought of the Apostle Judas. Eh, quite a funny subject, right? To write an oratorio. And then he said, okay, fine, let me go to Gerontius. Alors, le, ce choix va plus ou moins euh, euh, emballer les directeurs qui ne comprenaient pas pourquoi ils prenaient un sujet avec un, un rôle premier de ténor et non de soprano. Car l'œuvre ne comprend pas de solo de soprano. Alors, je continue. Elgar prend du retard dans son travail de composition et, il, comme je parlais, le chef Hans Richter, le chef d'orchestre, ne recevra pas la partition complète avant dix jours avant le concert. Imaginez, being a conductor, and you get the full score ten days before the premiere. Especially with a work like this, which is... Uh, about an hour and 45 minutes long. That's a lot of music. Uh, et ensuite, pour en rajouter, uh, je crois que c'est quatre mois avant la première, alors que les répétitions avec le cœur avaient débuté, le chef de cœur va mourir, imaginez. Je crois qu'il avait juste 46 ans ou quelque chose comme ça. Donc, le chef de cœur meurt. On doit le remplacer à pied levé par l'ancien directeur du Birmingham Triangle Music Festival, qui était à la retraite et qui, lui, n'aimait pas la musique. De, de Elgar, parce qu'Elgar, c'était son ancien étudiant dans l'orchestre qui jouait du violon. And he thought it was way too chromatic. So what did he do? He did a poor job to prepare the course. <laughs> so what do you think happened? They got to the concert and the course was not really well prepared. And on top of that, they ill chose the three soloists for the work. They were not great oratorial core, uh, soloists. And what happened? Well, It was a bad premiere. It was a terrible premiere. On the first entrance of the course, it's a cappella. And of course, after two, three bars, they went out of tune. When the orchestra came back in, it was a disaster. <laughs> Alors, il a été évidemment fâché, humilié comme compositeur. Et suite à ceci, il va avoir une grosse crise existentielle dans sa foi. Et c'est pour ça qu'il va déclarer ce que j'ai dit plus tôt, que Dieu ne, ne semble pas aimer l'art. Il va même dire, on his deathbed, to his physician, and I have put the quote here, I have no faith in the afterlife. I believe there is nothing but oblivion, which is quite shocking to read after the piece we're just about to study. Alors, the synopsis, what is this piece about? Why I keep talking about Catholic, Protestants, uh, the afterlife, what is this about? Well, c'est une œuvre qui est basée sur un poème, un poème de 900 lignes, imaginez. 900 vers, euh, du cardinal John Henry Newman, euh, un, homme, un cardinal qui a vécu assez longtemps, qu'on peut le voir, euh, ces dates, ils sont là. But not just that, he converted, not to pro uh, Protestantism, like often we see, <laughs> but it was the opposite. He was a Protestant and he converted to Catholicism. And not just that, he became as well a cardinal towards the end of his life. And I was talking yesterday with Timothy, uh, Timothy Scott from our choir. And he was mentioning that he was in Rome, I believe, when he was made, uh, he was uh, beyond, uh, comment ça, béatifié. Il a été béatifié. Uh, alors, qui était-il le cardinal John Henry Newman? Il était un lecturer, poet, and an amateur composer. And he wrote the poem, The Dream of Gerontius, in 1865 at the age of 64. Why? Because he wrote it following a visit to the deathbed of his, uh, his dear friend, the father John Joseph Gordon. Et puis, j'ai même lu qu'on dit que c'est one of the glories of English verse. Alors, whether you, you're a believer or not, whether you're Catholic or Protestant, just, there's just sheer uh, genius in the poem. Maintenant, le compositeur ne prendra pas les 900 lignes, comme je disais, c'est un peu long. Il va en mettre dans la musique à peu près le deux tiers, un peu plus que la moitié. Alors, let's talk about the story. Part 1. La première voix qui nous parvient est celle de le, le, le personnage principal, qui est Gerontius, qui veut dire « old man »,« vieillard ». Donc, quand on dit « the dream of Gerontius », on parle de 
évidemment, d'un homme qui est à la veille de, euh, à l'aube, comment on dit ça, à l'aube de la mort, et qui nous annonce son décès imminent et nous dit que Jésus l'appelle à lui. Le cœur répond par un choral apaisant sur les mots « Kyrie eleison » et ce soir, évidemment, on va le chanter ensemble. Suivi de prières pour le mourant, qui est typiquement euh, catholique, alors que la personne décède, il continue de prier pour le mourant. And then Gerontius then feels a recurrence of, of his final illness and sees a vision of the demons that he will encounter later. And that's one of the key moments in the second part. If you sang the works, you know about when the demons comes in. Yeah, come in, sorry. The choir intones prayers for Gerontius, praying God that he should rescue him as he did with other uh, famous figures of the Old Testament. And Gerontius' life gently slips away as he commands his soul to God. After a brief pause, we meet the priest who sends Gerontius' soul on its journey. And that will conclude the first part of the work, which is a little bit shorter than the second part. La deuxième partie est un peu plus longue. Et la, la deuxième partie euh, débute dans l'au-delà. Donc, il est décédé. Et qu'est-ce qui se passe? Bien, on suit maintenant le voyage hein, de l'âme de Gerontius. Et maintenant, c'est complètement différent. Autant dans la première partie, on va voir qu'il se sent très mal à l'aise, très um, anguished to the idea of meeting his God. And then in the second part, we can see the music as so calm and he feels actually great and relieved to be dead. And he's actually looking forward to meet God. Alors, qu'est-ce qui se passe? Bien, il rencontre un ange qui l'informe de ce qui, ce qui va euh, arriver. Alors, il avance tranquillement, euh, pas tranquillement, mais à grands pas vers le trône de Dieu où il sera jugé. Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe? Auparavant, des démons l'attendent à la cour de jugement. Et c'est un, un des, des cœurs que je vous parlais. Mais pas seulement ça. Alors qu'il continue son, son périple vers la rencontre de Dieu, il va aussi entendre un cœur d'ange qui écrit juste pour les voix de femmes. And if we, if we have time, we're going to listen to that a little bit later. Um, I keep seeing that people have uh, comments in, in the chat. I hope someone is, is writing back to them. Um, alors, so as John Sears and the angel arrive close to the judgment hall, um, the first echoes are heard of what eventually builds into the core climax of the whole work. Et c'est un cœur. Il est très long, il est très glorieux, qui s'appelle « Praise to the holiest in the height uh, ». The great chorus ends in a blaze of sound after which the mood darkens. Dronsius and the angel are now in the presence of God. Distant voices from back on earth are still heard, which is really interesting because then we realize that he's gone, but that it's still connected to his friend that are praying for him on a deathbed. So it's kind of both connected. Um, and then we meet the final character in the drama, the angel of agony. C'est le même ange qu'on rencontre dans, dans le jardin de uh, Gethsemane. He asks Jesus to spare Jonesius' soul, and Jonesius goes before his judge. And then he, uh, Jonesius pleads to be taken on to purgatory, and the angel gently leads him onward. Alors, ça, c'est grosso modo l'histoire. Alors, je pose la question parce que c'était une des critiques de l'œuvre. Is this piece simply too Catholic? L'Angleterre était profondément anglicane. You have to remember, remember this. And I was reading that until 1830, uh, which was the Roman Catholic Relief Act, the Catholic could not even sit in the chamber of, uh, come on, c'est la chambre des communes, c'est the chamber of, someone help me. The chamber, would you say the chamber? House of Commons, House of Commons. The House, House of, of Lords, of Lords, the House of Lords in the UK. Oh, it's House of Lords in the UK. Okay, thank you. So Catholic could not even sit in before the 1830. And because of that, I know the, the party apparently lost the next election because they were mad at them for doing this. Anyways, so it was strongly Protestant. Uh, Elgar a dû même apporter des modifications à l'œuvre pour pouvoir présenter um, à la cathédrale anglicane de Worcester. It was just too Catholic. Alors, qu'est-ce qui est trop catholique dans l'œuvre finalement? Parce qu'on a peut-être qui se disent, no, it's just Christianity, right? Well, what's so Catholic about it? Well, for example, he opens up by praying the Holy Virgin, Mary, which is something that Protestants don't do. That's actually a big difference. Another thing, lots of Latin in the work, right? Uh, not into the vernacular. Another thing, les amis de Drontius prient pour qui? Pour quelqu'un qui est déjà décédé. Les protestants ne prient pas les morts, mais les catholiques prient les morts. Um, la trajectoire de l'âme est ultimement quoi? Le purgatoire. And that's probably... <coughs> The, oh, Marsha, can you mute your mic, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, donc, le purgatoire, évidemment, c'est une grosse différence entre les catholiques et les protestants. Pour les protestants, c'est plus simple que ça. You die, you have the judgment, you go to, he to heaven, you go to hell. 
But for the Catholic, you have this in-between place to get purified, known as the purgatory. Alors voilà. J'avance. L'œuvre musicale. Alors on s'approche de la musique tranquillement. So who are the main characters in this music? Well, obviously, the main, 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 main character is the tenor. I could say that he does like 80% of the work, which is Drontius first in the first half before he dies. Et dans la deuxième partie, ça devient quoi? C'est l'âme de Gironcius. Gironcius en français, je ne sais pas. Gironcius. Il euh, y a une mezzo-soprano aussi, où, où certains vont l'appeler l'alto, euh, qui est l'ange. Euh, l'ange qui va accompagner l'âme de Gironcius dans la deuxième partie. Ensuite, il y a une basse aussi, qui est le prêtre dans la première partie et qui devient l'ange de l'agonie dans la deuxième partie. And then there's you guys. The chorus. And not just the chorus, there's a lot of divisi in it. It goes into eight parts. And then on top of it, there's a semi-chorus, which brings the chorus in total to 12 parts. Et comme plusieurs des œuvres dans les oratorios, who are we? Well, we're, we're the mob. Mob of demons, of angels, of souls, or assistants as we carry the soul to God. So we, we have different roles in the piece, which is great because it's fun to have different hats, right? to go to be a, a demon, and then a few pages later, you're an angel. <laughs> so you have uh, different roles. J'avance. Uh, l'orchestre. Alors, voici une des raisons pourquoi peut-être l'œuvre n'est pas fait souvent, parce que c'est un orchestre qui est aussi gros, par exemple, que uh, les Requiem de Verdi, right? This is a massive, romantic orchestra. Two flutes and a piccolo. Two oboe and an English horn. Two clarinets and a bass clarinet. Two bassoon and a country bassoon. And that's just the woodwinds. Et les, maintenant, les, si on regarde les cuivres, quatre quarts, trois trompettes, trois trombones, un tuba, ce qui est assez normal, c'est, c'est une section pleine, et quatre percussionnistes, des timbales, une harpe, un orgue, bien sûr, et des cordes. So, big, late romantic orchestra. Maintenant, on va tranquillement se déplacer vers la musique, on va commencer à l'écouter ensemble. Je ne peux pas écouter toute l'ouverture. Uh, it's too long, but like many overtures in operas, Um, and uh, remember that I was talking about Wagner. He's going to present all the different late motifs we're going to have in the piece, um, especially the first one we're going to hear. And I'm going to put it now. I'm going to play the music, but I'd be curious to know what you hear. I put here um, influence du requiem de Verdi. Point d'interrogation. I wonder if you can hear that in the beginning. Mais vous allez voir l'atmosphère qui est qui est très sombre, qui est très lourde. I'm going to stop the sharing so we can see each other a little bit. And um, let me play the music. Share screen, share audio. Let me know if it's too loud, okay? It's very soft. Alors, on entend une mélodie à l'unisson, right? That is the main leitmotiv for the whole work. And it begins with just that. And then he's going to obviously open up into much more. Let me now share the screen for... Um, was I done with my PowerPoint? Est-ce que je suis le seul à avoir rien entendu? Rien entendu du tout? Rien entendu du tout. Ah, je ne sais pas. Les autres, avez-vous entendu? Oui, oui, on a entendu. C'était pas très fort. Très bien. Très bien. Ouais. Désolé, Claude. Inquiète-toi pas, les autres mouvements sont vraiment plus forts. Um, it was just very, very soft. I sang it after, OK? You didn't miss much. It's just the main uh, leitmotiv. I, I just want to check that I, I covered everything in my PowerPoint before going to the music. Yes, I was about to say, let's dig in. OK, so that's good. So let's dig in. Now I'm going to share the screen for uh, the score that I sent by email today. Alors, si vous avez votre partition, vous pouvez la sortir. Sinon, je vais la mettre à l'écran, c'est pas grave. OK? So let's have a new share. Where's my score? Right here. Boom. OK. So, vous voyez la mélodie au début? Elle est juste là. La sol dièse, la sol bicafa, sol la si do la. C'est ça la petite mélodie. OK? Évidemment, il va développer dans ça avec plusieurs des, mélo- des uh, leitmotifs that will follow. Now, it's a very long overture. So, as I just said, I would like to go into the music if that's okay with you. It, it's going to take too much time. So, let me go to the entrance of the tenor. 
And who does he pray? Jesu and Maria. That's why I said it's quite Catholic. A, a Protestant would just pray Jesus, but a Catholic is praying Jesus and Mary. Um, so let's listen to, now you should hear something. Oh, it's very soft. I'll stop it here. So you, you can hear the anguish, right? I hope you can hear the chromaticism as well. It's moving. And another interesting thing, the music will not stop until we get to the end of the first half. So that's a big difference from uh, music in the past uh, where in an oratorio, you would have an aria, you would have then the chorus, right? You would have very clear defined movements. Mais alors ici, tout est comme connecté un, un, un mouvement dans l'autre. Il y a des petits moments d'arrêt, mais c'est pas, it's not uh, very cut and clear. Alors, uh, donc ça, c'est juste la première entrée. Moi, ce qui m'intéresse, c'est l'entrée du cœur. OK. Alors, ce que je vous invite à faire, c'est que, je, ça ici, ce sont ses amis autour de lui, autour de son lit, alors qu'il qu est en train de prier. C'est nous qui prions pour lui. Qui riez eleison. And it's very singable. So if you see it in front of you, with a closed mic, I invite you to sing. OK. Let me put it. Qui riez eleison. Here we go. Altos. Soprano. Bass. Can keep singing. That's the other chorus. Alto. Soprano. Squire comes back in. Alto. This is. I hear Verdi here. I hear Verdi. Do you hear that chord? Yeah, that, that 13 on the on the dominant. All the ending in Verdi always finish with that 13. Okay, could you hear it? Can you give not me- Not very well. No? Not very, no, it's not very loud. Okay, even if you put your speaker- uh... Yeah. Moi, je suis presque au bout, puis en fait, quand ça monte très fort pour toi, là, j'entends un petit, 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 petit peu, loin, 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 mais quand ça baisse, on n'entend plus rien du tout. OK, tantôt, on m'a dit que c'était trop fort quand j'ai fait des tests. Ah oh, oui. Oui, oh, oui, on m'a dit ça. Mm -hmm. um, let me do a new quand, quand tu parles, on t'entend super bien, Philippe, mais euh, avec la musique, c'est moins... 
Oui. OK. On, on peut essayer quelque chose d'autre. Si j'arrête, avez-vous la partition sur votre ordinateur? OK. Si j'arrête mon share de la partition, je peux sharer juste le son et ça, ça fait qu'il est fort. But you would have to follow on your own score. OK? So let me do that instead. I will just share the sound, not the image. OK? Let's sing it again if you don't mind. OK? Because you could not really well follow. So let's do it again. The Kyrie. Here we go. Is better? It's not louder? I don't know, I'll put everything max. Really? People are looking at me like this. I don't understand. I put all the, vol the volumes at the max. I cannot go louder than this. Yeah, on n'a entendu aucun changement. C'est exactement la même intensité. C'est-à-dire qu'on n'entend absolument rien de mon côté. <rire> Mais c'est pas grave. Vous m'entendez tout le temps les autres semaines, c'est bizarre. Hein? Non, c'est vraiment le son de ton ordinateur quand tu le partages, euh, qu'il est vraiment plus faible. Il va y avoir un réglage caché quelque part. Mm. And you really did uh, share the sound? You did you yeah. click that box? Yeah. My mic is low, but not the... Um... And unfortunately, I did the test, but I can hear it. <laughs> Pour préciser, moi, moi j'entends bien la musique, mais euh, elle est quand même à un niveau très faible. Je peux dire Et la même chose pour vous aussi. Vont bien. Ouais, je l'entends, mais c'est plus faible que ta voix, Philippe. Mais il y, y a aussi un réglage sur l'ordinateur. Peut-être c'est ça qu'il faut faire aussi. Il y, y a comme deux places qu'on peut régler. Il y, y a un réglage dans Zoom. Mais Zoom, c'est plutôt pour le, ton audio, le microphone. Mais il y, y a aussi le réglage sur l'ordinateur. Ou fait, avec l'application, puis le, aussi dans le, le, sur l'ordinateur. C'est Pianissimo hein, aussi. Hein. Oui, c'est Pianissimo, c'est ça. Parce que là, je pense que c'est fort. Okay, I put I put my mic up a bit. Let me let me know if it's better. It is piano. Okay, well then, if you cannot hear it still, uh, you still cannot hear it? No? Well then, let's take another excerpt that is louder because uh, I'm at my max. I cannot go louder. Okay, then what I had planned for you, um, the next one was be merciful. So in your score, it's page uh, 16 or 26 of the PDF or number four in the bookmarks, okay? Be merciful. I'll let you find it. And let me know if you can hear it this time. This one is louder. That's you. Alto.
Okay, so um, so that was your second time coming in, but look look at this. Um, if you can compare briefly on the PDF, if, if it's open for you, remember your first entrance that you could not hear on my computer. <laughs> okay, which was Kyrie Eleison. Kyrie, remember it was going up like that. If you click on it, it's book bookmark number three. Okay, donc maintenant regardez, cliquez sur bookmark number five. Rescue him. Do you see that it's the same music, but now it's in minor, right? So we can see here that the intensity is growing as he's facing death, because he's not dead yet. But now rescue him. So they're praying for him. He's just about to go, right? So let's now listen to that. You should hear this one, because now the intensity is growing. Rescue him. It's bookmark number five. <laughs> I'll stop it here. Did you hear this? He's using chant, right? So the semi-chorus on the top is using, right? Uh, Noah from the waters in the saving home. And then you answer, and sorry, th this is this is my, my younger side, my teacher's side. We have an answer on the Amen that sounds just so much like hip hop. It's crazy. This is like rap music. You just add a beat to the, those chords and you got hip hop. This is crazy. Anyways, so you, now that I said this, have a listen again this week, you know, and listen to those amen. It's crazy. It's like gangsters paradise. Wow. I could not believe it. But anyways, so we have this, be <laughs> this beautiful chant and then the beautiful answer to that. It's a beautiful moment. C'est très, très, très joli. Et là, à la fin où j'ai arrêté, on est en majeur. Je vais continuer un petit peu. Donc, on est à la mesure 65. Okay, and now let me just continue a bit. This is his final singing for the passage.
and this is it. He's dead. So we do have a little bit of a break, but not much. And right away, who comes in? The priest, a new character. This is the base. Um, a bit typical of the figure as well of Jesus in the passions, if you will. So we can see a bit of a connection there. And then what does he say? He says first in Latin, uh, go forth upon uh, thy journey, Christian soul. I'm going to put it because that, again, that late motif, that's a new one. It's going to come back and you're going to sing it later, the course. So let, let me play that when the priest comes in. And now listen to the, the basses of the orchestra. You should see it in the score, in the piano score. They have quarter notes on staccato. We can see the going of the soul, like the walk has started, right? The soul has departed from the body. Very interesting, small detail. Let me just put a few bars. So this is a big crescendo and then you guys come in that's the next one i think in your score yes go to number seven no 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 oh did i forget it um it's number six you, you need to scroll down a little bit go to number six in your bookmarks and scroll down to page 41 that's where you come back in as i just said it's a big crescendo et là vous allez arriver pour dans le fond um, faire écho au uh, à ce que le prêtre vient de dire Donc, vous allez aussi l'encourager à avancer. Donc, here we go. This is page 41 on, in your uh, PDF. Did you hear that you sang exactly, sorry to stop you, I know you want to go for the big moment, it's coming. Um, Avez-vous entendu que c'est exactement le, le même leitmotiv que le prêtre a chanté? And it's going to come back again. That descending progression is very interesting because he's going up the soul, but the progression is descending. Anyways, so here's the big moment, go forth.
Alto is trying to see this, man. Final two. And then who's the final one? Can you hear? It's the same melody we had for pray for him, but now we're saying through the same. You see, same melody that we used for the Kyrie before. We're almost done the, the music. For this. Okay, I'll stop it here. So that's the end of the first part. Évidemment, je suis allé vite un petit peu là. Il y a, a d'autres choses qui se passent, il y a d'autres choses qui est chantée, mais je vais juste vous donner les grandes lignes. Could you see the tone pa painting that he's using? You know those her those thirds going up. Da -di -da -di -da 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 -da. We hear folk music, right? Pentatonic, and we can see the soul basically going up to you know the journey, not to heaven. We're going to purgatory, <laughs> but still, we can we can see it going up. Anyways, that's very beautiful. And then. On arrive donc à la deuxième partie. Comme j'ai dit, tout ça était connecté dans la première, sauf l'endroit où, où il meurt. Et là, on, on change complètement de registre, comme je disais. C'est beaucoup plus euh, pastoral. Tiens, pastoral serait la, la bonne euh, définition. Uh, you know when we see into the green pasture, the good shepherd. So it's very calm. Um, la, la, the anguish is gone. Uh, maybe I can put a few. Well, no, I'm going to run out of time. But anyways, the whole context has changed. So basically, he's now going to meet the angel, which is the mezzo-soprano. She's going to come in the story. Et l'ange va donc lui annoncer qu'est-ce qui va se passer. Et elle va lui annoncer qu'ils vont euh, tranquillement avancer vers la, le jugement. Mais lorsqu'ils arrivent au judgment court closer, uh, there's the demons that are there. And the demons are there to see if they can make a new victim, basically, and get that, that new soul not to go to purgatory or to heaven, but to come to hell. Um, et si vous avez déjà chanté l'œuvre, c'est un des moments difficiles. These are the tricky choruses. I'm not expecting you to sing tonight. You, you can certainly try at home. You go. Go crazy. <laughs> Be a great demon just for tonight. Um, mais euh, juste avant, euh, c'est ça. On va, je vais vous faire entendre. Euh, donc maintenant, c'est de soul of Dreontius. C'est plus Dreontius dans son corps, mais c'est juste son âme. 
qui parle, qui dit, but hark, upon my sense comes a fierce hubbub, right? You hear there's something coming up, which would make me fear. Could I be frightened? And then the angel says, we are now arrived close to the judgment court. That sudden howl is from the demons who assemble here, assemble there, sorry, hungry and wild to claim their property and gather souls for hell. Hiss to their cry. And then we're going to listen to that. So in your, uh, dans le PowerPoint, pas le PowerPoint, c'est le numéro 7, le bookmark, le signe numéro 7, where it says, but hark, the page, if you're lost, is uh, 68, page 68. So let's listen to that. Now, um, I, I must warn you, this is a big chunk. I would like to listen to all of it. So here we go. But hark. Là, j'ai de la misère un petit peu. Here we go. But hark. But hark. Upon my sense comes a fierce hubbub. Could I be frightened? We are arrived close on the judgment call. Sorry to stop you there. Can you hear the bass? Boom, 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 boom. This is a contrabassoon. Can you think of a work that sounds like this later on in the 20th century? Sandra, can you can hear it? it. Yes, this is totally the right of spring, big time. So it's very, very like uh, primitive, you know. Anyways, let's continue. Let's continue. Sorry to stop you. And here we go. D Demons, that's you. They're, you're coming in. Try to sing this if you feel like it, but you don't have to. This is tricky. You'll see it's going to get faster, faster, faster. Good luck. Here we go. Just that last big chord. You don't hear Verdi? I hear the Requiem of Verdi big time. Da, with the seven in it and the bass. It's exactly the same chord. Moving on to a great fugue. Can you imagine a demonic fugue? That's crazy. Pick up this.
Light of Spring again. I hope you can hear it. Okay, now we get to the final segment of the demons. It's not done. The hardest part is coming. It's the haha -ha moment. And he was criticized for that because they're like, oh, that does not sound demonic enough, or that sounds kind of bizarre. Ha ha. Why ha ha? Well, it's in the text, but it's supposed to be like a nagging. Ha ha. And uh, it depends on some version. Some people go more wild on it, uh, but let's listen to it. So that's the final segment of the demonic uh, thing. Okay, I'll stop it here. So maybe you can hear a little bit of welcome to Hogwarts. No? Well, no, you don't hear a little connection to uh, Harry Potter? I do, especially avec uh, le glockenspiel. <laughs> you know, that's there. But uh, anyway, it's meant to be scary. Et puis je crois que c'est le quand même un peu là. Um, so there you go. Very crazy orchestration stuff in there. Moi, j'entends toutes sortes de connexions avec Verdi aussi. Son requiem avec le piccolo qui fait les envolées. Vroom, vroom. Uh, that we can connect to the DSIRE. Si vous l'avez déjà chanté, je suis sûr que vous savez de quoi je parle. But then he will continue, the soul is moving forward. Et là, on, 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 on s'éloigne des démons, et là, on approche un autre, vu qu'on approche la présence de Dieu, now we're approaching holiness. So it's a different situation, and now we're going to hear another type of chorus. Obviously, the ladies, the angels, and angels will come in here. So, je veux pas rester trop longtemps parce que c'est le cœur d'après qui m'intéresse, le grand cœur glorieux, le plus long de l'œuvre. Um, let me just put a few. Did I put in the, um, the PDF? Is it there? Demons, relentless, angelicals, number eight. Go to number eight. Okay, let's just listen to a few bars. Uh, angelicals.
I'll stop it. Did you hear in the beginning, just those, those descending arpeggios? Digga, digga, digga. Ça sonne un peu comme le soundtrack de Édouard aux mains d'argent or something like that. Um, it sounds as well comme le Carnaval des animaux. You know, the same sounds, number six or seven is, is, there, is exactly sounding like that. Let me just put the beginning again. It's so great. Just the first few bars. Very angelic, very angelic. Anyways, so let's move forward. So then we see the, on voit le cœur des anges qui chantent, auxquels vont se joindre tout le cœur en passant. C'est pas que les femmes. Everyone is going to be singing. And then what happens is that now we're close to the presence of God. Now we hear much more praise. And, and now this is the, the, the biggest, the loudest, the most glorious of all the movement uh, dans l'œuvre. Il est très long aussi. Uh, le compositeur va vraiment s'appliquer ici à montrer ça avec différents chiffres indicateurs. The rhythm is going to change. And we have the semi-chorus singing. Et on a aussi le chœur complet qui, qui chante avec des divisies and, uh, and so on. So this one is going to last a good six minutes of music. Puis moi, dans ma partition, ça dure à peu près 35 pages. Mais c'est très joli. Puis si je ne me trompe pas, je crois aussi que ce chœur-là a été utilisé à l'extérieur de l'œuvre. So some people, if they would take away a course of the work, it would be this. They would sing that out of context because there's a clear beginning and there's a clear end to it as well uh, that you can use. Alors, on va l'écouter ensemble. Attention, ça commence un peu fort. So if, if you have uh, earbuds, I, I'm just preparing you. Je veux pas que personne se blesse les oreilles. Parce que, en tout cas, anyways. This is praise to the holiest. <laughs>
I'll stop it there. And then obviously it connects. We have the um, <clears throat> the timpani with the roll <clears throat> that connects it. Alors, c'est glorieux, hein? <clears throat> Pas rien qu'un peu. Puis voyez-vous que le premier quart de half course ou de semi course, il, il fait pas juste un petit peu là. Il, 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 il intervient autant que le cœur. C'est pour ça que ça prend des, des forces chorales très larges. You need a lot of singers to sing this. Uh, with the DVZ, with the range, with the stamina, you know, to sing something like this for seven minutes, like Fortissimo. <laughs> It's a lot of sound. Alors voilà, ça c'était le, le, le cœur, si on veut, central de la deuxième partie, uh, mais aussi le plus gros de tout l'œuvre au complet. So it was the biggest one. And now, as I mentioned, he's going to go and meet the Angel of Agony who's going to intervene to pray for him once more. Um, but then the, the mood, if you listen to the whole thing, you'll see it's going to darken. It's going to darken because suddenly he's going to be, hang on a second, like I'm really going to meet God. And, and it's something that not a lot of composers put into music. How do you write music about meeting the face of God? Like the holiness of God. How do you put that in music? We, we have music about the angel who sing about the holiness of God. But how do you put in music la sainteté de Dieu? Tu mets ça comme ça. So, here's what um, Elgar decided to do. He decided to not do it, but he did this. He decided to put in music the wink of God. Alors, ce qu'il va faire, c'est qu'il va demander à l'orchestre, et je vais vous, je vais vous dire c'est où exactement là, dans l'œuvre, là de jouer le plus fort possible qu'ils pouvaient sur leur instrument. Et on va créer une espèce de bang hyper fort. Et suite à ça, le ténor dit, take me away. He just got a wink, just like of God on his presence. And he says, take me away, take me away. Um, and in the lowest deep, there let me be. And there in hope, the lone night watches keep uh, told out for me. They're motionless and happy in my pain, lone, not for lone. Alors, c'est vraiment intense. Um, je veux pas faire mal à vos oreilles non plus, là. Ça commence directement avec ça. It's the encounter to God. God's present. Pouf! And then it's over. He says, take me away. <laughs> it's very intense. Um, moi, dans ma... OK, là, je regarde ma partition. Je vais essayer de vous donner votre partition. C'est un peu plus bas. Je l'ai pas mis dans les... Um, dans les bookmarks. Aïe, 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 ok, attendez, il faut que je trouve la page. Vous pouvez descendre. Si vous étiez à la fin du, euh, du dernier numéro, ah, il y avait une page à l'envers, hein, je viens de voir ça. Oups, pas le fun, ça. Um, C'est après l'autre cas. Désolé, j'aurais dû le prévoir. Je suis trop loin, là. There, I will sing, take me away, page. I think, uh, I think I found it, oui, 115. Oui. It's 158, guys, if you want to go to 158. In the bottom, there's a big crescendo uh, that's building. And then what I'm talking about, it's hard to see because in the score, in your score, it's not a very good score. Top of 159, the crescendo builds to a fermata. It's hard to see. Il y a un petit point d'orgue à la fin. Et là, on arrive au chiffre 120 à la page 159. And it says, fortissimo zando, piano. And that's the wink I'm talking about. OK? So let me put that. Uh, no, it's not this file. Sorry. I was not supposed to do it. Here we go. How was it? Did you hear that? It's kind of screechy, eh? Let me do it again. <laughs> I didn't put the, I can put the crescendo before maybe. No, I'll just put them. Here's the wink again. Quite advanced for romantic music, eh? Isn't it? Rawr! And then it, 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 moves, it moves on. And then basically it, it's very poetic and very sad at the same time. The angel is going to take his, well, the hand of the soul and bring the soul to the water of the purgatory that the river is going to take him slowly to the purgatory. And then there will be a last praise to God because he must spend some time there. Fait dans un sens, c'est assez... Euh, 
c'est un peu stern pour terminer comme ça, là, c'est quelque chose. Um, so, just to conclude on this presentation tonight, let me stop the sharing. Uh, pourquoi euh, pourquoi est-ce que je vous ai présenté cette œuvre-là ce soir? Uh, c'est qu'il y a différentes raisons, mais la première, il faut se rappeler qu'en Angleterre, there's Messiah, you know, maybe there's Elijah, and then there's the dream of Dronsius. It's a work that is, has been loved for, uh, since it was created. It, it was along for a long time. It was around, sorry, for a long time. Alors, c'est une œuvre du répertoire qui est très importante, même si elle n'est pas faite beaucoup uh, ici um, uh, en Amérique du Nord. L'autre raison, you have to give it some time. The quality of the lyrics and the music builds on you. And once you know the late motifs, you go, ah, oh, oui, c'est vrai, ça, c'est le thème de ça. Ah oh, oui, on l'avait entendu tantôt avec le cœur. Ça prend du temps, ça, 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 ça monte sur toi tranquillement comme une genre de vigne là, qui grandit. Là. So this music grows on you. You have to let it, you have to give it time. Puis lorsque tu connais les mélodies, c'est super intéressant. Tu vois comment elles se promènent partout. So give it some time. Another reason. La pièce, oui, bien qu'elle est très religieuse, oui, elle est très catholique, but still it talks about the universe, universe, universality, c'est ça? Universality, am I saying it right? Yes of death. And, and as a choir, we've been seeing lots of requiems, right? But it's great to have another take on it. Instead of having someone dead and then we pray for the dead, like a requiem. C'est intéressant d'avoir l'histoire de quelqu'un qui n'est pas encore décédé, qu'on aime, pour qui on prie, qu'on veut le bien, qu'on entoure. Et ensuite, la personne qui décède et qui commence son périple et qui nous, on, on agit comme déjà, soit comme démon, comme ange. Ça donne une autre perspective sur une réalité religieuse de bien des gens, qu'on soit euh, catholique, qu'on soit toutes sortes de dénominations, qu'on soit protestant. Qu la chrétienté, comme vous savez, a beaucoup de dénominations. Alors, il y a quelque chose d'assez universel dans la mort, mais aussi dans le propos de la chrétienté qui est abordé. So, I think that you should give this piece a try, a few, uh, a few tries. You should try to listen to it. And I have, but over the summer, a great little coffret from Elgar pour comme, je crois, 35 dollars in which I have all the big works from Elgar, um, his oratorio, which are hard to find, like the apostle I was talking about. The music makers, another oratorio that is done sometimes, the music makers, uh, the apostle. So, plusieurs des oratorios de Elgar pour 35 dollars, it was, it was dirt cheap. And the recording you heard tonight was part of this coffret. Okay, ça s'appelle Chor Choral Works, and it's conducted by Sir Adrian Boult. I'm going to put it closer if you want to see. Maybe it's hard to see. So, Choral Works by Elgar, conducted by Sir Adrian Bould. Et une dernière chose pour vous, on va terminer ici ce soir. Je vais share my screen again. Uh, mon petit PowerPoint. OK, on va aller à la dernière page. Je vous ai mis aussi dans le... Not, sorry, I'm just skipping to the end. Uh, key recordings. So the one I just showed you is there. It's the last one. Mais j'en ai mis d'autres qui sont plus récents. Parce que celui que je vous ai montré, il est quand même assez vieux. Il date de 1976. But if you want something more uh, recent, j'en ai mis deux ici de 2008 et de 2014. Uh, alors, si vous voulez vous, vous procurer ça, je vais vous donner le PowerPoint, the slide, so you guys can do that. Alors, voilà. Merci. And if you have questions, I can take maybe one or two quickly because we have to end in about two, three minutes. But if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer. Hi. Yes. It's not a question, but um, we did the Music Makers. about oh. fifth, The Music Makers, we did it on uh, the St. Lawrence Choir and the, no way. Montreal, and the Montreal Symphony. Can I, uh, Maybe 15 years ago? 15? I don't know, um, 15, 20 years ago, we did it. Okay. And we did it with uh, Franz Paul Decker was the conductor. Wow. Wow. Ça, des bons souvenirs. Marie-Hélène dit que c'est des bons souvenirs avec le CL. Okay, donc tu l'avais fait toi aussi. That's great. Sorry yeah. to look at the chat tonight at all. Anything else, Robert, you want to say? No, that's it. Anyone oh, else? Yes. Yeah, there's a... Um, At the end of King Olaf is a very pretty, it's almost like a final chorale um, called um, As Torrents in Summer. Yeah. Very quiet, it's a beautiful choir piece. We sang that too. Yeah, We that did that with you. 
Mm -hmm. That one is in the Oxford book. Everybody probably knows this, right? Part songs and madrigals. Mm -hmm. The as Torrance in summer, as yeah. other pieces by Edgar. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Any any other comments or questions? I have a comment. Yes. There's a there's a choral version of the Enigma variations, right? I've done that before. Uh, Nimrod, you mean Nimrod, maybe? Yeah. 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 Yes, that's cool. Anything else? Est-ce que tu aimerais qu'on la chante un jour? Moi, c'est sûr que j'aimerais ça diriger cette œuvre là Si on me pose la question, vous le savez, moi, j'aimerais diriger bien des œuvres avec gros orchestres et, et grands solistes et grands chœurs et, et, et semi-chœurs, but it would cost, I don't know, $80,000 $80, to produce this, $80,000 to $90,000. Oui, oui. Oui, c'est ça. Mais hein, il faut, faut, faut rêver, les amis. Il faut rêver, il faut rêver. We can do the two piano version. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Anyone else with comments or questions? Uh, bravo pour uh, ta préparation, Philippe. Merci beaucoup. Ah, ça fait plaisir. Ça fait plaisir. Mm -hmm. Qu'est-ce que je peux avec le temps que j'ai là? Mais uh, j'ai eu de l'aide, hein? J'ai eu de l'aide de, de Claude qui me l'a corrigé puis me l'a amélioré un peu. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Philippe. It was great. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So I'm going to let you go unless you have a meeting with me uh, afterwards. Donc, la semaine prochaine, on travaille le dernier mouvement de la messe en fa majeur, le cum sancto de la messe en fa majeur, if you want to prepare for that. <laughs> Sinon, you have a great night. Bonne soirée, tout le monde. Allez vous reposer et on se voit la semaine prochaine. Merci. Salut. Au revoir.